For this required practical, we are going to measure the density of some objects. In the first set of measurements, we will measure the density of these regular objects. In the second part of this investigation, we will find the density of some irregular objects. What do I mean by regular? And what do I mean by irregular? Well, the volume of this cube can be found by measuring its size and then applying the formula for the volume of a cube. Whereas an irregular object, like a stone, there's no formula that predicts its volume. And so therefore, I will have to find its volume a different way. What you will need to do is you will need to write a table. And in that table, you will need to put the name of the object, the mass of the object, and then leave a space for working out the volume. In the final column, you will need to write your density calculations. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the formula is for each of these shapes. I'm going to leave that to you. So, when I tell you what the shape is, and I tell you its dimensions as measured here, you've then got to research the formula for the volume of this shape. I will also tell you the mass of each one of these. Let us begin. So the regular objects whose dimensions I'm going to measure include a cuboid, a pyramid, a cube, a cylinder and a sphere. Now I'm going to measure those dimensions with a ruler and a digital caliper. I will also use a set square for the sphere and the cylinder, which I'll show you in a minute. I have the scales here so that I can tell you the mass reading as we go along. Please make sure your table is ready to receive this information. So first of all, using the ruler, I'm going to measure in centimetres First of all, the dimensions of this. So it is 12 centimetres long. It is 6.6 uh, .6 centimetres high. And it is 2.5 centimetres wide. The mass of the cuboid is 39 grams. For this pyramid, it has a square base and four sides. So let's measure the side lengths. In centimeters, it is 5.6 centimeters. I could also measure the height of the pyramid, and I'm going to use my set square so that I get an accurate measurement of the height. The pyramid is exactly 56 uh, millimeters, so that's 5.6 centimeters from the base to the apex. The cube is too small to measure with the ruler. So what we're going to do is measure it with this caliper. So there we go. It is 1.992 centimeters. And what I should find is that all of the sides are approximately the same. So all of the sides are approximately two centimetres. The mass of the cube, 72 grams. Now, you're sitting there thinking, but I haven't recorded the mass of the pyramid. Yes, I'd forgotten. So go back and record the mass of the pyramid, which is 164 grams. 
Now, it may well be that I can measure with a cylinder its dimensions with this. Yes, I can. So, it is 4.9 centimetres in diameter, and it is 39.5 millimetres, so that's 3.96 centimetres long. The mass of the cylinder is 29 grams. Now for the sphere. Can we measure the sphere using this? I think we can actually. I won't need the set square. So the sphere, you can see, is 7.32 centimeters in diameter. And the mass of the sphere And get it to stay. It's trying to roll off. There we go. Is 725 grams. Now you have all the information you need to calculate the density of each of these objects. For the second part of this required practical, we must find the density of some irregular objects. Now, no mathematical formula can help us find the volume. So we have to use a Eureka can like this one, or like this much bigger one, to do the water displacement trick. What we also have is a measuring cylinder. And though this may look unconventional, it is just a measuring cylinder, but for larger volumes. We have some scales, or a laboratory balance by its correct name. We'll find the mass with this, we can find the volume with this. Now we have a range of objects whose density we're going to find. You will need to record the name of each object, the mass from the scales, and then the volume from the displacement. With those, you will then need to calculate the density of each of these objects. So what are the objects we're going to have today? We have volcanic pumice. So this is rock that has just come out of a volcano. It was uh, a rock that is literally uh, erupted about 20 years ago. So volcanic pumice. The next is a quartz crystal, the next, the philosopher's stone, the next, a meteorite, the next, the stone from the very top of Ben Nevis, and finally, a dead cat. So get ready to take your mass measurements. So first we will put on the volcanic pumice. Four hundred and eighty three grams. The quartz crystal. Seventeen grams. Oh, eighteen grams. The Philosopher's Stone. Uh, make your mind up. 184 grams. The Meteorite. Fourteen grams. Stone from the top of Ben Nevis, 242 grams, 242, a dead cat, 13 grams. Now for the volcanic pumice, it is too big for the smaller of our Eureka cans, so we'll have to use the bigger one. 
and I'm anticipating that its volume will be quite high. So here we go, this is about stopped dripping now. I'm going to now put it in the Eureka can and we will measure the volume. Pretty much. So we'll measure, let's say with there, it is still dripping, but what can you do? It is 260 millilitres. 260 millilitres. So for the quartz crystal, I think we're going to use a smaller measuring cylinder. So I'll just pop that on. In it goes. And there we have it. We put it on the side and we look in and we find that it is 7.4 millilitres. 7.4 millilitres. Now for the Philosopher's Stone, I imagine that the smaller Eureka can is the appropriate one, but I think it will have a volume greater than this small measuring cylinder, so I'm going to use the larger measuring cylinder that we used before, and we'll try the Philosopher's Stone. go and taking it on to the level it is exactly 60 millilitres 60 millilitres now the meteorite looks to be about the same size as the quartz crystal so I think the smaller measuring cylinder will be better let's give it a go every last drop okay right so the we are at 4.8 milliliters for the meteorite 4.8 now for the rock that uh, has come from uh, Ben Nevis I'm going to use the larger Eureka can and the larger measure, measuring cylinder. It's dripping just because the water's moving slightly, but it won't affect the result very much. So in it goes. And we'll just catch the last couple of drips. And then we'll have a look. I think we're about there. So, Ben Nevis is 100 millilitres. 100 millilitres for Ben Nevis. So, the dead cat, whose name is Schrodinger, by the way, uh, we shall use the smaller measuring cylinder now to see if that's better. In it goes. <sighs> now that is interesting because it's gone off the top of the scale. I can extrapolate up. So it's 15.6 millilitres for the dead cat. 15.6 millilitres. 
And this concludes this required practical. What you should have is two tables. The first table should contain the dimensions and volume and mass measurements of our regular shapes. You should have calculated the density for each one of these objects. In a second table, you should have recorded the mass and the volume of each of these shapes and therefore concluded what their densities are. Now, can you tell me which one of these objects has the highest density? And can you tell me which one of these objects has the lowest density? As an extension question, if water has a dens density of one gram per centimetre cubed, anything with a density less than one gram per centimetre cubed will float. So which of these will float?